Uh, and the first talk is going to be given by Christos Katsarios right? uh, from the um, National Technical University of Athens. Uh, he's a PhD student in that university, and his main uh, research interests are in uh, cloud computing and systems. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, I'm Christos, and I'm glad to be presenting you the work of our team. In this work, um, we um, ex we explore the performance of serverless functions uh, running in micro VMs restored from snapshots on various storage devices. So serverless and functions as a service uh, have been widely adopted by cloud and providers, by cloud users and cloud providers for the numerous benefits that they enable. Uh, a main benefit for cloud providers is the fact that they can consolidate their uh, their clients' workloads by communicating numerous functions, uh, thus improving their cluster's utilization and reducing their costs. However, they also have to deal with several challenges. One of them is isolation, so client workloads must be isolated in a secure and performant manner. And traditionally, there are many ways to do this. Uh, however, containers and micro VMs appear to be uh, the most dominant choices in functions as a service nowadays. In this work, we'll focus on micro VMs, specifically five uh, as it's a battle-tested solution uh, developed and run in production by Amazon. And one way or another, most cloud providers appear to be using uh, hardware-assisted virtualization techniques to provide isolation. So another major challenge is the infamous problem of cold starts. So what is a cold start? Uh, upon an incoming function invocation request, a new micro VM has to be booted, and this function's execution environment has to be initialized. Uh, this uh, typically involves booting a kernel in some language runtime and any other dependency necessary to actually run the function. This delay can climb up to one second or even more, and uh, this can be too much considering that the majority of functions are uh, extremely short-lived. So to combat this, cloud providers have been keeping function instances warm for a certain time window after each invocation. And this is certainly effective in terms of performance. However, uh, it is some sort of over-provisioning. Uh, and idle, idle uh, micro VMs uh, waste cloud resources. And this only gets worse if we consider that the majority of functions are invoked rather infrequently. So, uh, we understand that the cost of keeping function instances warm is, can get considerably high relative to their billable execution time. And this is where snapshotting comes in. Uh, virtual machine snapshotting is an old concept that is being revisited lately to address uh, the problem of cold starts. Uh, so the main idea is that when a micro VM is, uh, has been initialized successfully, it is ready to serve a request. Uh, the virtual machine monitor here at Firecracker captures its state, <coughs> including just physical memory, L2 files present on storage. And uh, during periods of functions and activity, the micro VM does not need to run and waste uh, cloud resources. And upon an, uh, an, uh, an arrival of, of, an, of a request, the micro VM can load the snapshot from storage and be immediately ready to handle the, the request having bypassed the boot and initialization phases. So prior evaluations have shown that uh, self-shotting is uh, indeed uh, an improvement over booting a new micro VM in terms of performance. However, cold start effect perseveres. And to see why this happens, we'll dive into how snapshot restoration works uh, in the case of a local disk. So micro VM, fire, so Firecracker to load the snapshot uh, creates a private virtual memory mapping of the guest physical memory file, but the mapping is not populated, and therefore its content still resides on storage when uh, micro VM's execution is resumed. Uh, therefore, any accesses on uh, yet untouched micro VM's pages trigger net defaults, and uh, therefore any, any uh, required pages are transferred on demand from the snapshot file that lives on storage which traditionally is a disk that is slow, into DRAM, uh, which is, since uh, disk accesses uh, are traditionally buffered through the page cache. And this happens right on the critical path of function execution, and this is what slows down uh, functions restored from snapshots. 
In the case that the page needs to be written, an additional DRAM to DRAM copy of the page is required due to copy and write. So prior works have not considered storage as the evolving hierarchy that it truly is, with newer media and uh, interfaces and links. And uh, this hierarchy nowadays, uh, the, the distinctions among its layers are uh, blurred. And uh, importantly, persistent memory being mounted on DIMMs like DRAM and in contrast to SSDs features direct access of, uh, of its contents of the data it stores uh, rather than buffered access like SSDs by the means of the page cache. And uh, so in this work we uh, in, in this work we measure the latency and uh, attempt to analyze the behavior of serverless functions that uh, run in Firecracker micro VMs restored from snapshots that reside on various devices uh, across layers of this hierarchy. Uh, we experiment with a flash-based uh, SSD over SATA 3, an Intel obtained DC SSD over NVMe, and an Intel obtained DC persistent memory module in that direct mode. And let's see how snapshot restoration of the persistent memory differs from what we saw earlier about disks. So uh, when a, a micro VMs, a yet untouched micro VMs page is uh, accessed, a nested fault is triggered as earlier. However, this time, read-only pages don't need to be transferred from persistent memory into DRAM, thanks to persistent memory's direct access. Uh, merely populating the page tables suffices to handle the fault, uh, since the page can be accessed directly uh, on the on persistent memory, and any subsequent uh, accesses are served, they don't trigger the, uh, any fault, but they must be served from the slower medium again, from persistent memory, rather, rather than DRAM, which is significantly uh, faster in terms of latency and bandwidth. Uh, however, uh, in the case that, any, that the page needs to be written, then a copy of the page into DRAM is still required due to the copyright semantics of uh, private file mappings in Linux. So with this in mind, let's see our experimental setup. We run our micro VMs over 16 physical cores of a single host, where uh, the aforementioned devices are attached. Um, each server uh, runs uh, functions. Uh, each each micro VM runs a server that serves uh, uh, functions adopted from uh, the representative function bench suite. On each run, uh, micro VM is um, is restored from a snapshot that resides on one of the three devices under examination, and the client issues two requests: one for the call invocation and one for the work and measures the latency of the responses. We further break that latency down to three constituents. The first is function execution, which is measured within the handler itself. The second is client overhead, which represents any overheads, any, any additional overheads to function execution as perceived by the client. And the third is VMM loading, which is negligible compared to the other two, and we won't be focusing on it today. And uh, to facilitate our analysis, we classify our functions into three main categories. Light functions have a minimal workload that execute fast. Heavy functions latencies uh, are noticeable regardless of call starts, and they're generally CPU bound. Mid functions stand in the middle, so uh, their workload is far from trivial, but they execute quite fast. And so uh, for the rest of the talk, uh, vertical axes represent time in uh, milliseconds, however, uh, there won't be too many numbers here. All the numbers can be found uh, in the paper. Here we just skim through some of the results and the conclusions. Uh, so we begin by uh, comparing uh, our SATA SSD with the obtained NVMe in terms of call start latency. And we find that by merely um, replacing uh, our old disk with a newer one, we, we, s we observe speed ups of up to six times. The speed ups are more stable for the client overhead part of the total latency, the orange part, uh, which is in par with its nature, with the nature of uh, page accesses there. However, uh, speed ups for uh, the function execution part are, are also visible, and um, they also get uh, less and less significant as the function gets heavier, which is expected. So overall, if, uh, newer, modern, faster uh, block devices, such as Obtain and VME, SSDs suffice, generally suffice to speed up call starts significantly by up to six times as we measure. 
And we move on uh, by bringing warm invocation latencies into the picture. And we want to observe how big is the difference now between cold and warm invocation latencies, now that we're using a faster medium. So we observe that um, we observe that by using uh, the faster medium, uh, this uh, gap is significantly narrowed. So uh, this is uh, this is true for uh, for all functions across all categories. Uh, however, it is particularly important for light and mid functions. Uh, first, because this is where uh, the majority of uh, functions appears to to fall fall into the majority of functions out there. And second, because uh, we now see how uh, how cold invocations latencies over the our newer device uh, now might be falling within an acceptable range comparable to uh, that of to the latencies of uh, warm invocations using our slower device. So overall, uh, modern uh, block devices like Optane and VMI SSDs uh, bring the latencies of cold invocations uh, significantly closer to warm. And we move on by bringing the recent memory uh, into the picture. Uh, we observe that uh, when the snapshots are stored on persistent memory, the lighter function is the more significant uh, the, the speed up that we observe in the case of persistent memory becomes. Uh, light functions execute more than twice as fast uh, over persistent memory rather than the obtain in DME, despite both devices having the same medium underneath. Uh, one reason for that is that persistent memory is a device with lower access latency. Uh, to further explore this, however, we also measure uh, the working set size of each of our functions, as well as an approximation of the read-only and writable pages uh, of, it, of each working set, and uh, the amount of uh, data read from uh, persistent memory using a tool by, provided by Intel. And so we find that uh, lighter functions appear to have smaller working sets, they access their working sets more sparsely, and uh, they tend to perform mostly reads on their working sets. So what this means is that uh, thanks to uh, personal memory's direct access, fewer data need to be uh, accessed overall in the case of light uh, functions. And also the penalties from recurring reads over the same read-only pages uh, and th these penalties are due to personal memory being slower than DRAM. Uh, so these penalties are limited for light functions. So overall, we observe that functions that are not CPU bound and which access their working sets sparsely and mostly perform uh, reads appear to be benefited the most from using uh, persistent memory. Uh, we should also note how close now uh, call start invocations are uh, over persistent memory compared to uh, the warm invocations over our uh, slow SATA SSD. Uh, so in certain cases, th that always depends, but in certain cases, uh, cold, starts, cold start delays might even be considered practically eliminated. Um, so another important aspect of using persistent memory rather than an SSD, being uh, either it is, either we're talking about a flash SSD or uh, an obtained VME, is resource utilization. So when we're using persistent memory, precious DRAM pages that would otherwise be occupied by uh, guests' working sets now remain free and available for use elsewhere. So in fact, uh, the approximation of uh, read-only pages that we measured uh, also is the, the uh, approximate percentage of DRAM resources saved when, uh, when booting a fraction over uh, a snapshot on persistent memory rather than an SSD. So overall, storing snapshots on persistent memory can save DRAM resources. We found that this can get nearly up to 70% per function for our lighter functions, a bit lower for our mid and heavy functions. But this uh, presents a unique opportunity for high workload consolidation. And uh, OK, so. Uh, we, let's briefly mention that, um, as we measured, when uh, when micro VMs run in isolation, uh, warm invocations latency, uh, over, uh, when uh, restored from snapshots over based on memory, does not appear to be significantly affected. Although 
this is uh, uh, there, there are more numbers to it. There's more to it. Uh, more analysis can be found uh, in the paper. However, overall, uh, the, the effects are minimal. So far, we've been experimenting with uh, single uh, micro VMs experiments. Uh, so, and uh, we've identified two major device attributes uh, that can make a difference in functional latencies. Uh, one of them is uh, the device's access latency. And the other is um, whether the access is buffered or uh, direct. So moving, moving forward, we're experimenting with multiple micro VMs restored from snapshots in parallel uh, to handle two requests, a cold and a warm. Uh, so um, on e each micro VM is associated with its own uh, snapshot. And all snapshots on each run are uh, stored on the same device. Therefore an increasing number of page faults must be served from the same device, and this stresses uh, the device's read bandwidth. So let's examine uh, call start latency uh, in our three devices. So overall, we observe that uh, the performance on uh, persistent memory and on Octane NVMe is quite similar. Uh, it's close, uh, whereas the performance over our uh, slow uh, flash-based SATA SSD is always in the by far the worst. Uh, so we find that um, the I/O operations per second limit uh, on our of our uh, flash SSD is already saturated at four concurrent micro VMs. Therefore, switching over to an Octane NVMe always yields speedups, and these speedups keep growing until about 16 micro VMs, eight to 16 micro VMs, when the bandwidth of our Octane NVMe begins to be uh, stressed as well. So overall, we uh, we identify, we re realize how important uh, the read bandwidth of a device is uh, and how it can severely affect the scalability of cold invocations. And this is a result that corroborates past studies. And we also attempt to quantify this by showing how our flash SSD can't keep up scaling after four uh, cores, after four micro VMs while uh, our obtaining VME uh, manages uh, to scale quite, uh, quite well over our, uh, this, our 16 physical cores that we're running on. And each micro VM runs uh, significantly faster than on the flash SSD. So putting the flash SSD aside, uh, we can focus on our two modern fast devices. Uh, overall, their performance is close, however, uh, also, the performance appears to be following a similar trend. However, uh, we see, we observe how, in the case of light and mid functions, uh, there's usually a speed up from using persistent memory rather than obtain NVMe. And this speed up uh, peaks at a factor of two and very rarely three. So one might have expected this, the, the performance difference between those two devices to be significantly uh, bigger uh, because of uh, persistent memory's higher nominal read bandwidth. So it appears that um, it appears that uh, re restoring uh, re micro VMs from snapshots in parallel over persistent memory exhibits a combination of characteristics that have been shown by past studies to severely degrade the performance of persistent memory, and uh, they don't allow it to, to harvest its bandwidth to its fullest. And this is particularly true for single team setups like ours. And uh, uh, yes, so uh, more uh, more information about this point and about uh, other the previous points can be found in the paper, where we also examine other aspects that we have not uh, discussed uh, about here. So in the future, first we want to experiment on a multi MVD setup. Now that we actually have the hardware. And um, we also have to experiment, we, we want to experiment on a multi-node setup to, to have a better, uh, a better view of the, of the bigger picture of these latencies on the cluster. We aspire to, uh, we plan to work uh, on building a model or a set of rules that uh, decide uh, where a snapshot should be better uh, be placed on which device based on various factors. We think we, uh, some of them we might have identified, 
however, uh, such as um, execution time or invocation frequency or maybe the read-write ratio um, of a function, of the accesses of a function, uh, we probably, we, we might be missing some important factor, factor. We, we need to look into it more. Uh, so we need a way to characterize uh, the workloads and eventually we want to integrate this uh, with an orchestrator and um, we want to see whether snapshot placement can be considered an important uh, factor in uh, resource allocation policies and schemes. So overall, we talked about uh, call starts and the trade-offs of the existing solutions. We talked about snapshotting as the state-of-the-art solution and how it intersects with storage I.O. because of page fonts. And uh, so we bring the idea of uh, taking advantage of the richness of modern storage hierarchy. And uh, we study, we measure how modern devices like Octane NVMe and persistent memory can uh, narrow the difference between call start invocations, uh, how, uh, between cold invocations latencies and warm invocations latencies. We also show how persistent memory uh, creates opportunities for uh, higher consolidation. Uh, but we also show how newer storage media also have their limits, especially as snapshot and scales up on a node. And uh, we want to motivate further research on uh, how uh, snapshot placement can be integrated in resource allocation policies in uh, modern serverless stacks. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, in modern hypervisors. In modern. Oh, too much. <laughs> yeah. So, in, in modern hypervisors, uh, you have a kind of deduplication for uh, uh, memory pages. Uh, so, uh, in case you're running in some application in scale, you have uh, micro VMs running some functions, you'll have uh, multiple instances of the same. <coughs> So most of the memory will be deduplicated and still stay in memory, right? So uh, how does it interleave with the snapshots on Octane? So uh, in general, we, uh, we have been using uh, full system snapshots. So each snapshot is a, a dump of the, of the memory. Uh, it's a serialization of the whole physical memory uh, onto a file. However, there are uh, Firecracker also supports deep snapshots, uh, which are stored on uh, uh, on, uh, on files as well, so uh, we haven't experimented with this. However, uh, um, I guess uh, the, um, storage still makes a difference because uh, store, uh, snapshots, snapshot layers are still stored on, uh, uh, on storage devices. However, uh, we don't have numbers for this, we haven't experimented. However, it, it remains relevant, I, I think. Thank you. So you speed up the page fault handling by loading the reads directly from the obtained DRAM memory instead of from other places. Yes. If you know for your startup what kind of pages you are going to access, could you further speed up the execution by prefetching all the necessary pages to the last level or second level caches with the uh, uh, asynchronous prefetch operations. Exactly, yes. There are works that uh, do this. Okay. They focus on slower storage. And yes, this is, uh, this is very valid and uh, the, um, the improvements are uh, impressive. Because then you do have more regular sequential access instead of uh, random access to the to the uh, obtain memory. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So let's uh, thank again the speaker.